Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day nine of the Lico Day Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about today's farm. Binary trees with factors. Okay. I'm not gonna lie, so I am a little bit tired. I drank a little bit earlier today, so we'll see how this goes. Uh, hopefully, it goes smoothly. The first thing I notice by glancing is that this mod thing. So I'm gonna do the mod song and hopefully not forget mod. Mod, 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 mod. But yeah, today's problem is binary trees with factors. What are we asking for? Okay. We're given an array of unique integers all where an integer is greater than one. We make a binary tree using these integers, and each number can be used any number of times. Each non-leaf node's value should be equal to the product of the values of its children. We turn the number of binary trees we can make. Huh. That's a little bit weird, but okay. I, I mean, they also represent in a weird way. So, okay. So then that means that... Mm, let's see. Uh, number of binary trees we can make. Okay. Mm, well, th so the one thing that makes this uh, easier, computationally, not, you know, is that, uh, is that each number may be used any number of times. So in that way, you can do this recursively, I think. Um, in that there's no state to remember, right? There's no like, hey, I used this once, I used, or I didn't use this, um, because you can use it any number of times, everything's just recursive, right? So then here we can maybe do, um, oh man, I'm not articulating well, but hopefully maybe that's okay. Um, but then the idea is that, okay, let's say the node is, is the value, and then now we have to do, um, how do I even say it? Sorry, friends, uh, <laughs> uh, not 100% today. But basically, a node can be a node if a node can be a node if it is uh, the product of two numbers that's inside the list, right? Um, and then we can solve for those recursively. Um, man, I, my brain is okay. N is a thousand, so but that's okay either way. So, hmm. <laughs> Yeah, let's see. Sorry, friends. Let's figure it out. Uh, and th this is it. So we can definitely do this with memorization um, and recursively is what I meant to say. Um, it, the, the thing to notice about this is that it is a, it's a um, order away element are greater than one, right? And why is that important? The, that's important is that it makes it uh, a DAG, uh, a directed asynchronous graph. And what that, that means is that... Um, you know, when you do this recursion, you can only make it smaller. So, um, so you can do this because, uh, because n is only a thousand, you can also do something like n squared. Um, and what that means is that, yeah, I think that, that means that we can here, without having to make any crazy optimization, you can just just uh just go through it a thousand times right every element in the list so let's have something like maybe uh do, 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 do. let's just say maybe some uh can maybe like some kind of um what's it called uh, allowed is equal to to the set of array right and then here we go okay so total is equal to zero uh, it's the number of moves um let's just say maybe one for we start at one because if node is in allowed, then we can you know have one case where we have no children, right? Uh, if we want to have children, then we have four x in array. Mm, I guess that's right. Uh, and here we assume that x is going to be the left. So, oops. 
So if node mod x is equal to zero, then um, n uh, node divided by x is in allowed. That means that both of these numbers are in the thing. Then we have total. We increment it by go of Uh, let's see, right? x times go of node divided by x. Basically, this is the number of nodes on the left, numbers of nodes on the right, and then that's pretty much it. And of course, we have to uh, keep track of the mod. And yeah, and that should be mostly most of the idea. Oops. Um, and then here we just started off by going for x is an array, and this is just checking. Um, where x is the, the root of the node, right? So that's basically the idea. And I think this is mostly good. Um, I'm, I don't know that I explained it that well, but this is... Oh, well, the one thing is that we should memorize this, but we'll, we'll do that in a second. But let's at least make sure that this is kind of right. Okay. Um, yes. So one thing to do here is that we want to memorize this um, and we can look at it by saying let's just say cache is equal to a, a dictionary because no you can also cache on the index but the way that i already did it's too late uh, or at least it'll be a little bit messy so but yeah we have cache and then here you can do something like if node is in cache then we return cache of node and, and at the way end we do cache of node is equal to total i think this should be good um, and of course, I like I it kind of alluded to this, but kind of alluded to this, but uh, but this is n square, um, and I've thought about n square before implementing it. Otherwise, this is how you get TLE. And why is it n square? Well, this function, how many uh cores are, how many possible inputs are there, right? Well, node can be one of the O of n inputs, and each input takes O of n times because of this loop. This loop is O of n, so, so each possible input, because we memorize it, will take O of n times. And here, then, oops, total time is going to be n squared. Um, and, and space is going to be O of n, because, you know, it's O of one space for each one. And here, this is just, it's already n squared, so it's n squared plus n, which is still n squared. Uh, I think that's pretty much, you know, let's, let's give it a go. Oh, I solved it a year ago. <laughs> Hopefully this is fast enough. But a million, it should be okay. Unless there's some weirdness. Huh. There is some weirdness. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hmm. Am I close? Or? No, not at all. Man, I, maybe I just missed something obvious. Mm. Oh, I am dumb. Wait, is it? Hmm. Well, I think there's some... Hmm. Hmm. Why does this? I think I'm just doing a little bit, uh, something bad with the caching. Wow. Hmm. Oh, wow. That's a bad typo. Whoops. Whoopsie daisy. So, wow, we did a lot of problems. Um, <laughs> we saw 42 cases with that typo. How did that even happen? So, yeah, I mean, okay. Now I don't feel that bad. I mean, I, I don't know how that happened. But that said, yeah, that's just a typo because I... I was like, huh, I don't know how, we, I thought maybe like I did some weird caching and I was wrong about the DAG, but I just noticed this, thankfully. Still a little bit sad that we, we had a typo the first time, but that said, yeah. So this is n square time uh, of n space, and that's pretty much all I have. Um, the idea here is just recursion, so for every node, and this is, uh, and this is the node that's at the root of a subtree, and then you just do the count there. There are some optimizations you can make probably here so that you don't... I mean, it'll still be n square, but maybe it'll be faster n square. Um, but this is the idea. I don't remember this problem at all, but yeah, let's see what I did last year. 
Um, okay, I mean, I guess I did the same thing last year, really. <laughs> yeah, I guess I did the same thing last year, pretty much exactly. So if you find this video lacking, hopefully uh, you can find the video from last year a little bit better. Sorry, to, I'm a little bit... <laughs> A little bit under the weather today, so I, I uh, my communication may be a little bit off. My nose is very sniffling, so I don't know. But let me know what you think. Uh, if I could do this, uh, I'm so tired. But yeah, hopefully you you uh, you're doing okay at home. Anyway, that's all I have for today. Stay good, stay healthy, to good mental health. I'll see y'all later and take care. Bye bye.